is different depending on where you are. This is the concept of anchoring. So I'm here in Bangkok and I got breakfast. I got, you know, some noodles with crispy pork and then I got a drink, Roselle tea. And I'm still hungry. I got another thing. Uh, fried rice with shrimp. Another drink, iced tea. They don't call it Thai iced tea here, it's just iced tea. And it ended up being 160, which I think is pretty expensive. Basically five bucks US. But it's funny because just a week ago I was in Boston where I found some Vietnamese food pho. And I paid eight bucks for a large bowl. I was like, wow, this is crazy cheap. But that's because just a few days prior to that, I had been in Alaska, where I had paid 14 bucks for pho, and it wasn't as good, and the bowl wasn't as large. So it's all relative, this idea of what is cheap, what is expensive. And that makes sense, because we use the term cheap. And we all know it's a comparative term. But the bigger concept is that we don't actually have any idea of what is cheap. But it's not just that. It's we don't have any idea of anything. In terms of status quo, they used to think that it was a fixed concept. People always prefer keeping to the status quo. And you presume that status quo has a universal meaning. But it may not. Status quo may have different meanings for different people. Is it life as it is, or expectations as they are? Because when I move from place to place, I change my expectations of price. I'm not comparing it to what actually it is supposed to be here. I mean, maybe this is very normal price because I'm in an area that's more expensive in Bangkok. But my expectations is that I'm in Thailand, it should be cheap. So it's all related to our expectations. And our expectations change and people can change them, we can change them. And so there's this concept called anchoring. And it's the idea that when we look at something, we have to have a basis for determining what is beauty. If you saw the episode of the Late Night Show about beautiful people in Sweden, how everybody's gorgeous, and they just took a few hosts, is by Conan, a few people off the street, random people, and they all look like gorgeous models. Of course, it's a joke and everybody's laughing because they are models. They aren't just random people taking up the street, but the idea is that, you know, everybody in Sweden is gorgeous. Tall, blonde hair, blue eyed, fit. But I remember when I was in Sweden and we went to a midsummer party where they celebrate the longest day of the year and there's this one short Indian girl who was very very attractive to the other guys you could tell but she is definitely not gorgeous compared to Indians I've seen in California she's normal but over there because she's so exotic she is gorgeous she's rare she's a catch So I guess it all makes sense, and it's all something we knew, subconsciously. But we don't realize how important it is to make decisions based on understanding this concept of anchoring. So when you sell something, some people throw out a lowball price. And you think, oh, they're just joking, of course nobody's going to pay this little. But really? They're not joking. They're trying to mess with your mind. So, for example, when Richard Branson was buying Necker Island, there's another guy who was rich but fallen on some hard times he needed to sell. They threw out a super low price, 100000 What a joke, right? A private island for 100000 Can't be serious. But you end up getting it for only a little bit more, like half a million. Should have been a multi-million. But he anchored this idea in somebody's head that this is a plausibility, a possibility. And if you want to think about the greater scheme of things, 
As adults, many times we think things are impossible because we can't know that it's possible. But once we know somebody who has done it, then we change our probability from one in a billion to one in a thousand, even though it doesn't actually affect us. One of my childhood friends from church growing up was a guy named Daniel Chung. He was brilliant at drawing cartoons. He did a mural for our middle school. But he wanted to make it to actually be a cartoonist. I remember hearing how he did some stuff for Chicken Little. It's like, oh, you could barely see his name in the credits, but yeah, I guess he maybe did some drawings. But it wasn't until a few years later that somebody posted on Facebook saying, hey, he made it. You see him receiving awards. And then now, We Bear Bears is produced by him. So he actually made it. That gives me hope that I can make it too.